you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can and you do that by coming up with the answers that no one else could think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Rob and this is my partner Raisa and we're from Leeds. Couple number two. Hello, I'm Colin, this is my handsome son Connor and we're from Wokingham. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Charlotte, this is my sister Katie and we're from York. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Ted. I'm from a place called Bracknell, and this is my illustrious wife to be, Kaylee. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. I provide the chances, he provides the answers. Again, it doesn't make sense, but it rhymes. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, a couple okay. of things to pick up on yeah. there. Yeah. Ted's, uh, Ted's wife to be is illustrious. That's good to know. That's isn't it? nice. That is good to. And and Colin, like any dad, thinking I'm going to embarrass my son now by calling yeah. him handsome, and then forgetting where he lived. Yeah. Straight afterwards. <laughs> so that is. Uh, there you go. You have got to be careful when you try and embarrass people. Uh, but lovely to have you both here, uh, our newcomers, and welcome back to our returners. Uh, Robin Reiser got knocked out in the first round last time, uh, and Charlotte and Katie knocked out in round two. So no one here yet has been in a head-to-head. Or a final, but someone's going to be. Two pairs are going to be in the head to head. One of them are going to be in the final, if I remember <sighs> how this works. And we've given away the jackpot five shows in a row. Yeah. Did that continue last time? Ah, yes, because this is the interesting thing. One of the pairs in front of me right now will be going through to a final and playing for an enhanced jackpot because Blair and Sarah didn't win it last time. We're adding another £1,000 to it. End of sub clause <laughs> of £2,250. <laughs> Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Remember at all times, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated, so your job really is just to keep your scores as low as you possibly can, whilst also remaining correct, obviously. That's the challenge. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Words. It's one of those rounds. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending G-N as they could. Oh. oh. Interesting. Oh. Oh, are you thinking already? Oh, I, yes. Yeah, we're looking for any word yeah. in the Chambers uh, Dictionary, please, that ends G-N. As always, no hyphenated words, no proper nouns, but anything ending G-N. I will try and predict yours. I used to predict them all the time. Yeah. And I've really absolutely lost whatever yeah. mental connection we used to have with these ones. Yeah. It's gone, but I've, I, I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah, I think, I, I think I've got mine. No, really? I've got mine. It might be... If another better one... This is, well, this is where I feel down. guilty. Well, I'll listen, find... I'll write it down. OK. If so, oh, I see you mean so you might change in the middle. I mean, if but keep this one in mind, and then yeah. if something else crops up as well, done. Okay, done. I'll do that. Thank you very much, indeed, Richard Rob. Uh, Rob, lovely to have you back with us. Uh, tell us more about yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Rob. I work in flood risk management, and in spare time, I love to play tag rugby. Very good. Now, a lot of a lot of developments now getting built on on essentially floodplains, which seems like craziness to me. Must yeah. make your job fun. Yeah, it's uh, particularly busy when the rain starts coming down. Yeah. But as new developments don't really go on floodplain as such, but it's a lot of old developments which do, so right, they're the I ones see. with the problems. I see. OK, right. Now, Rob, have you had time to think? It's always tricky going on that first podium. Yeah, um, I've got one in my head which I think is OK. Um, yeah. Just trying to think of some more, though. Uh, I think I'm going to go with my first answer, and I'm going to go rain. 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 Rob says rain. Let's see how many of our 100 people went with that. <laughs> Goes down to 40. 40 for rain. I mean, you're plain to type, isn't he? A flood risk manager going for rain. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, as in yeah. the rule of a monarch, the rain. Yeah, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Connor, welcome to Point. It's great to have you here from... Working. <laughs> Working, yeah. Uh, tell us all about yourself. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm training to be a financial advisor, um, play a bit of rugby also, and, uh, yeah, I haven't been doing much of that recently, but there we go. 
There we go. Yeah. Um, how, how long is this training for financial advice going to take? Uh, a few more months, really. I'm training to do my diploma, so I've got a few more exams to do to make sure I'm not giving anybody duff advice. Um, okay. and yeah, just uh, keeping at it, really. OK, all right. Connor, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go for a line. A line says... Connor, let's see how many of our 100 people said a line. That goes down to 30. 30 for a line. Uh, yeah, to place or arrange things in a straight line. And if you do that on the beach, then it's a line in the sand. Quite right, yes. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Charlotte, uh, welcome back. Uh, tell us more about yourself, Charlotte. Uh, so I'm a student, but in my spare time, I write and make short films. Do you? Mm -hmm. How many have you got to your name so far? Um, I've only got two that have actually been made, but um, I am in the works of writing quite a few. And what do you film them on? Well, when I was a student at college, I had access to cameras, so that was nice. But... So you're on, on film? Uh, or... No, digital. No, on digital. digital, yeah. I mean, the lovely thing about short film is it just goes back to the bare essentials of storytelling, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they're great. Oh, good for you. Now, Charlotte, uh, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go for benign. Benign, says Charlotte. Let's see how many of our 100 people said benign. It's right. 40 is our high score, 30 is our low. I think you're past the high and the low. There you are, 28 for the nine. Very nice, yeah, it means gentle and kindly, or it's after you uh, be eight and before you be ten. <laughs> Very nice. I haven't changed my mind yet. I'm still, oh, still sticking, sticking loyally. Well, it's written loyally. Right there. Oh, oh, is that I a clue? Have... What? Quite often. No, no. Okay. Quite often, you flatter me. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, still I think with it. this one. No, I think this one. I've got. I've got okay. a fairly good, good basic one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. good. But basic. good. Basic yeah, but good. good. Basic but good. Yeah. That's that's, that's what, what I strive for. Yeah. yeah there that's we what, go. That's what your agent says. Yeah. <laughs> Ted. Hello. Yeah. You are most welcome here. How lovely to have you here, Ted. Thank you very much. He's got a very good television manner, Ted. Oh, <laughs> very good. Oh, a winning smile. If only. Yeah. <laughs> a winning smile. Um, now, yes. Tell us all about yourself, Ted. Okay. So I've been with my lovely wife-to-be for about five years and uh, we're in the process of moving house and outside of that I am actually a library assistant in the local um, community in Bracknell. Good for you. Good for you. I would not you. genuinely have guessed that Ted worked in a library. No, not at all. No. <laughs> it takes it... some getting used to when people find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, right, Ted, um, what are you going to go for? Right, so in theory I should be good with words but uh, I am sort of second-guessing myself, so I'm going to say, with slight hesitation, a rain. A rain, says Ted. Let's see how many of our 100 people said a rain. Oh. See, that's good, Ted. Oh, oh. that's a pointless answer, okay. not just good. Oh, you left good in your wake Thank some you. way back there. Um, now, Ted. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes it up to £2,500, scores you nothing. It's good. <laughs> it's very good. Thank you very That's much. That's brilliant work, Ted. Yeah, welcome to Pointless. Very nicely done. Yeah, to call someone to court to face a criminal charge, a rain. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look through those scores. Nothing. The best score of the past, Ted. Nothing, I tell you. Ted and Kayleigh looking very strong. Then we travel quite a way up to 28, where we find Charlotte and Katie. Then up to 30, which is where we find Connor and Colin. And then up to 40, where we find Rob and Razor. So, Razor, you've got a bit of time. Use it wisely. Find a lovely low-scoring answer, and that, let's hope, will be enough to get you into round two. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Kayleigh. Welcome Hello. to Point. It's <laughs> lovely to have you here. Illustrious <laughs> Kayleigh. Um, tell us all about yourself. So, yeah, so, so we live in Bracknell. Um, I run an events company, uh, events and entertainment, so... Um... You make a lot of noise. Ted <laughs> goes around saying, shh. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> That's fun. Um, so what sort of events do you do? Um, so mainly children's parties. Um, so I do a lot of, um, well, I do the planning of it and also the entertainment for it. So I'll dress up as a lot of different characters um, and entertain the children. Uh, and I also do things like balloons. So one-stop shop, you know, we'll plan your party, decorate it and appear at it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, very good indeed. Now, Kaylee, look at that. Brilliant score from Ted in the first pass. <laughs> Means that 39 or less gets you into the next round already. Okay. What would you like um, to go for? So there's a couple of ones that I thought of that had been said already, um, but I'm going to go with uh, resign. Resign? Yeah. 
Resign, says Katie. Let's see, here is your red line. Resign gets you through. Look at that, Dan goes to 30, perfect. Takes your total up to 30. Yeah, to voluntarily leave a job or office. It's what we're certainly in the like the 80s and 90s uh, politicians used to do. Oh, yes. Do you remember when Gosh, people used to resign? That. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Katie. Hi. Katie, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself, Katie. Hi. So, yeah, I'm a bartender in York, but in my spare time, I do a lot of painting, uh, just very artsy things. What sort of painting do you like to do? Do you, do you go out and about and paint things? Oh, no, definitely. No. I am. Um, I do a lot of portraits and um, a lot of paintings of people's dogs recently. That's exciting. It's I mean, lovely. do you do any of them? For, I mean, dogs, obviously, you can't really get dogs to sit still. Amazing. But do you do any from life or do you do most of them photographs? Mostly from photographs. Very good. What are you going to go for, Katie? You're on 28. OK. Your so, target is 11 or less. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go for a sign. A sign? Yeah. A sign says, Katie, here's your red line. Let's see if we can get you close to or even below that with a sign. A sign is right. Not bad, 19. Takes your total up to 47. Yeah, to allocate the job uh, or a duty. So there's some good answers going in, some aren't there? good answers, yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> they're not what I've got, but uh, they're <laughs> uh -oh. OK. They're OK. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Colin, welcome to Pointless. Thank good you. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Colin. I live in Wokingham yeah. with Connor. <laughs> <laughs> and I work in London for a service providing company which cleans the trains and the tubes and buses. That's quite satisfying. Yeah. Then um, do you actually go in and do that or do you don't I do... I manage a contract, you on, manage a contract. on one of the lines, yeah. I see. Very on a group indeed. of lines. Which is the cleanest line? My lines. Jubilee. Jubilee. Oh, Jubilee. Jubilee, oh. Piccadilly and Northern Line I look after. OK. Um, now, Colin, you are on 30. You need to score 16 or less. What are we thinking? We're thinking design. Design, says Colin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said design. Here's your red line. Design is right. 34. Takes your total up to 64. Uh, yeah, plan or a drawing, a design. An expensive one is a grand design. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Razor. Hello. Welcome back. This is your second attempt at the Pointless final. Tell us more about yourself. Yep, yeah, I'm a clinical engineer from Leeds, and uh, not a lot of people know this about me, but I did a PhD in the formulation of toothpaste. <gasps> I I've always what? wanted to know, how do they do it? How do they get the stripe like that? Oh, I can't tell. You're not allowed to tell us. <laughs> if you cut up in a packet, actually, you'll find yeah. out. Yeah. I know, but that's a that's terrible a waste of toothpaste. It's a good trick with kids to it, keep them entertained. OK. So well, all the answers are there. If I take a cross-section near the nozzle, cross-section down the tail end, and a cross-section from the middle, I'm being very scientific here. Yeah. And that, uh, thoroughly, that will tell me the story, will it? That probably wasn't what the PhD was about, though. No. <laughs> no I mean, I PhD is just still in the foothills. This is obviously right at the summit of the... Of the, of the... I imagine it's chemical compositions and yes, things like, rather I... than how do they get the stripes in. Yeah. I'd like to know how they get it in the tube through that yeah. tiny little hole. Yeah, I know. That's even harder. Yeah. I think the answer might lie in the tail. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I'm shooting in the breeze here. <laughs> I don't know. Riza, <laughs> what are you going to go for? Um... By the way, we need a score of 23 or less from you. Yeah, because I can't think of a new one. I might go for redesign and steal. See, that's a brilliant idea. I hope that's, it's a little bit That less. is where low scores lie, as long as there's not a hyphen there. Here is your red line. Oh, Let's find out. Redesign. Is it right? What will it score? It's right. Oh, I have a very good feeling about this, uh, Ricer. It gets you through. Oh, it goes down oh. to two. Two. Taking your total up to 42. Yeah, that's annoying, Colin, isn't it? Uh, very well done, yeah. Redesign, two points. Very nicely done. Uh, and funnily enough, you can redesign something, but also if you design something beforehand, you're pre-designing. That's pointless. And that's a pointless answer. Oh, yeah. That's good. Um, what's your answer? Impune. Impune. Yeah. Impune. Interesting. Yeah. It's not the sort of thing I would have guessed. Originally, I thought you might go for countersign. That's good. Which would have scored one point. Yeah. Uh, but in the end... Yeah. Uh, I went for impune. Oh, you did go ah, for impune! Gotcha. Ah, well done. Oh. 
He's back in the game. Finally. Still got it. I still got it. Still got it. Still, still got, it. got it. Oh, that's cheered me up. That's nice. uh, good. Listen, not that I was unhappy, but it's, uh, it's maybe even happier than good. I was. Uh, let's take a look at the pointless answers, shall we? We've seen one of them already from Ted, and that was Irene Condine. Uh, which is um, that, the show they have on Channel 4, Come Dine With Me. Uh, there's a, a spoon. You could have had Frank Moin, which is a, a feudal tenure. Uh, miss a sign to miss attributes. Uh, miss Fane to pretend to be feigning something. Outrain, so rain is a lovely answer, but to outrain means to rain for longer. Uh, Pre-design, there it is, and Fane, which again is a, a feudal thing, but a different spelling. We normally spell it T-H-A-N-E, but you can spell it T-H-E-G-N. Very well done if you said any of those uh, at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Colin and Connor. I'm afraid you are that pair. You've only just arrived. <laughs> Don't go too far. We'll see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. In the meantime, thank you very much indeed, very Colin much. and Connor. But for the remaining three pairs, now time for round two. <laughs> well done, everybody. We made it through the words round. Um, now then, Ted, yes, you were our lowest individual scorer there, so well <laughs> done you. Ted and Kaylee, unsurprisingly, our lowest scoring couple as well. So fabulous work on that far podium. Uh, good luck, everyone. Our category for round two this afternoon is... The Summer Olympics. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Britain's greatest Olympic moments, Richard. Yeah, in 2020, the BBC put together a list of the 25 greatest British Olympic moments. We're going to show you descriptions on each board of six people who featured somewhere in one of those events. Can you tell us who these people are, please? Six on the way up, six on the way back down. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our first board of six clues to great Olympic moments. And here they come. We've Got cyclist who became the first Briton in 100 years to win three golds at one Olympic Games, CH Beijing 2008. Runner who has helped over the finish line by his father after pulling up injured in the 400 metres, DR Barcelona 1992. Heptathlete who won the first of Team GB's three gold medals in the space of 44 minutes on Super Saturday, JE London 2012. Long jumper who became the first British woman to win an Olympic gold medal in track and field, MR, Tokyo, 1964. Tennis player who won Olympic gold on centre court weeks after having lost the Wimbledon men's singles final, AM, London, 2012. And swimmer who won gold medals in the 400 metres and 800 metres freestyle, RA, Beijing, 2008. Rob, over to you. OK. Um, big fan of the Olympics, so I've watched a lot of the recent ones. Uh, not such good knowledge of the previous uh, ones past 2008. Um, so I've got a pretty good idea of three of them on the board. I'm going to go with Rebecca Adlington for swimmer who won the gold okay. medals in the swimming. Lovely. Rebecca Adlington for the bottom one. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rebecca Adlington. Rebecca Adlington is right. It's a great answer. That goes down to 12. Very well done indeed. Great start to the round. 12 for Rebecca. Yeah, those two golds made her the first uh, British woman to get two golds in swimming for 100 years. 1908 was the previous time it had been done. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Katie. Hi. Yeah, I know a couple. Um, I think I'm going to go for the heptathlete who won with Jessica Ennis. Jessica Ennis yeah. from London 2012. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jessica Ennis. Jessica Ennis is right. Now, 12 is the only score we have at the moment for Rebecca Adlington. Jessica Ennis scores 17. Very well done. Yeah, we won uh, two rowing medals and a cycling medal that day as well. Thank you very much. Now, Kaylee, <laughs> you're the last person to have this board. Yep. Do you feel like talking us through it? <laughs> Um, I'm not very good at sport. I think the top one's Chris Hoy. Um, and the only other one that I know, I think, is the tennis player is Andy Murray, but I imagine that'll be quite high. I'll say Chris Hoy, but... Um... OK, well, let's go for Chris Hoy. Let's see where we end up with Chris Hoy. It absolutely is Chris Hoy. 17 is our high score at the moment, and 12 is our low. And look at that, 24. That's not bad. 24 for Chris Hoy. 
And again, three goals in a single game, and that hadn't been done for 100 years either, again, since the, the London Olympics of 1908. Now, uh, Andy Murray would have scored you more. You did well to go for Chris Hoy. Andy Murray would have set you back 51. Uh, the one atop the runner, that's, that's the clip I always say is the, the greatest clip of athletics of all time. It's the one thing that guaranteed to make everybody cry where he's helped over the line. Really very beautiful. Uh, and it's Derek Revenant. Uh, very, very moving. Seven points for him. Uh, and the long jumper was Mary Rand. Best answer on the board. Five points. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 12 is the best score of the past, Rob. Well done. Rob and Rice are looking strong on that. Then 17 is where we find Katie and Charlotte. Then 24 is where we find Kaylee and Ted. Ted, how good's your Olympics knowledge? Just as much <laughs> as uh, Kaylee's. OK, well, listen, you get the new board, so try and find a lovely low score on it. Let's hope that's good enough to keep you in the game. Um, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more descriptions of people who were involved in these Olympic moments on the board, and here they come. We've got middle-distance runner who defeated his rival, Sebastian Coe, in the 800 metres, S.O., Moscow, 1980. Dressage rider who won team and individual dressage gold on Vallegro, C.D., London, 2012. Hockey player who scored twice to help Great Britain beat West Germany in the gold medal game, I.S., Seoul, 1988. Athlete who won his second Olympic decathlon title in a row, DT, Los Angeles, 1984. Boxer who became the first ever woman to win an Olympic boxing title, NA, London, 2012. And rower who became the first in his sport to win gold medals at five consecutive Olympic Games, SR, Sydney, 2000. Right, Ted. Right. OK, you're the high scorers at the moment. Mm hmm Let's have a lovely low score from you. How do you like the board? Um, I can only really answer two of them, and that's not because I'm a fan of the Olympics or sport in general. This is very much just, I think, seeing their biographies on the shelves in the library. So I'm going to go for London 2012, and that will be Nicola Adams. Nicola Adams, the boxer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nicola Adams. There's no red line for you, Ted, as you're the high scorers at the moment. Nicola Adams is absolutely right. Not bad. 32 takes your total up to 56. <laughs> uh, well played, yes. You also won gold in Rio as well. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now Charlotte. We've got a target for you. 38. 38 or less. I don't think I'm going to get there, cos the only one I knew was Nicola Adams. So, yeah, I have absolutely no idea. So I'm just going to say for the Los Angeles athlete, David Thompson. OK, you're going to go David Thompson, um, the second Olympic decathlon title in a row. David Thompson, shall we see if that's right? Here's your red line. No, I'm afraid not, David Thompson. That scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 117. Sorry, Charlotte, I'll give the uh, correct answer at the end of the round. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Raisa. Great news for you, you're through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. Do you want to talk us through that board? No. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm in the same position. I knew Nicola Adams and my heart sank when he said it. So I'll just guess uh, the rower, Simon Rhodes. Simon Rhodes. Um, no red line, you're already through. So uh, it doesn't matter what Simon Rhodes comes up with or doesn't. But let's find out for fun. Simon Rhodes. Nope. An incorrect answer, I'm afraid. It scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 112, but you're through. It's fine. Uh, yeah, let's clear up those two answers first. Two of the greatest British Olympians of all time. The rower. Steve Redgrave. So Steve Redgrave. He would have scored you 38. And the decathlete. Daly Thompson. Daly Thompson. So, so close to David there. Thompson. Uh, unlucky. Almost accidentally got a correct <laughs> answer there. Yeah. 26 points for Daly Thompson. Um, the middle distance runner. Um, is uh, Steve Avett. Steve Avett. He would have scored you 30 points. Um, the dressage rider. Is that Charlotte Dujardin? It is Charlotte Dujardin. She would have scored seven. And so this team, this, this hockey team, they were huge. Do you remember when they won that final? They were yeah. massive. Yeah. And there's three yeah. of them that, that people had heard of. Uh, Ian Taylor, who was the goalie. Sean Curley, who was one of the strikers. Uh, he scored the other goal in this final. Uh, and this gentleman, uh, Imran Shawani. And he's a pointless answer, so very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye to our second pair of the day. Charlotte and Katie, I'm afraid you are that pair. You'll be back next time.
Let's take it further next time. Got to take it to the head-to-head -head <laughs> and beyond. Uh, meanwhile, thank you very much, though, thank Charlotte you. and Katie. Time for the remaining two pairs. Now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Kaylee and Ted, Rob and Riza. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot even more by finding a couple of pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Downton Abbey characters as they could. Richard? Yeah, six names on the board. As always, two of them will be pointless answers and two of them will be fakes that we've made up. So Downton Abbey or Downton Shabby. Thank you very much indeed. And by the way, I like I like Thanks. that idea. OK, let's reveal our six potential Downton Abbey characters. Here we are, two of these appointments. Joseph Molesley, Mrs Patmore, Harold Levinson, Alexander Kitchener, Lady Fiona Carnarvon and Henry Talbot. There we are. Now then, Kaylee and Ted, you'll get to go first, but do feel free to chat as a four if you have any bright ideas. I think I'll take you up on that. Yeah, so we don't watch Downton we Abbey. We don't watch <laughs> it. We'll probably watch it after this and kick ourselves. Um, so... I can't even work out which ones would be the fake ones. I um, think Henry Talbot sounds like... It, I feel like I've heard the name before. Yeah. And so Carnivon I'm... could be a possibility. Yeah, I was leaning towards that one as well. I'd you were. OK, that's fine. Second opinion there. Helps. Um, <laughs> I'd probably say Henry, but I'll let you decide. Um, OK, ladies' choice. We'll go for Henry Talbot. OK, Henry Talbot. Shall we find out? Is Henry Talbot a pointless Downton character? Henry Talbot is a Downton character. Henry Talbot, I'm afraid, scores points. Uh, now, Rob and Racer, do you want to see if you can find a pointless um, character? Yeah, sure. It would just be a guess, so we're going to guess Lady Fiona Carnarvon. OK, Lady Fiona Carnarvon. Shall we see if that is a pointless character from Downton? No, I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer. Well, if they go there, yeah, Lady Fiona Carnarvon is the, the real-life lady of, of um, yeah. Highclere Castle, which yeah. is where they set uh, Downton Abbey. Um, now, of these others, Mrs Patmore is a scorer. Uh, she's the biggest scorer up there. She would have scored you five. Um, one of the points answers uh, I'll give you is Harold Levinson, Cora's playboy brother. So, of these other two, one is incorrect and one is pointless. I know that Julian Fellow's wife is a kitchener, and I'm guessing that means Alexander Kitchener is the other red herring. Absolutely right. Julian Fellows, who writes uh, Downton Abbey and created it, is Julian Alexander Kitchener Fellows. So Alexander Kitchener was incorrect, and Joseph Mosley is the other pointless answer. So Joseph Mosley and Harold Levinson. Well done if you said them. Thank you very much indeed. So bad luck we didn't find any pointless answers, but it does matter, we had some fun. Yeah. Just, you know, rootling around in Downton. Uh, let's play the head-to-head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You're now allowed to confer before you give your answers, which is nice. Uh, best of luck to both pairs. Here's the first question, and it's all about... sea creatures named after land plants. Richard? Yeah, we can show you five creatures now, all of which have names which start C uh, and end with a plant. We'll show you alternate letters of that plant as well, but what are these creatures, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five creatures, and here they come. We've got... Creature A, C... N-T-L. B. C-G-O-E-E-R. C. C-P-T-T. D. C-P-N-A-P-E. And E. C. L M N. There we are. Kaylee and Ted, you get to go first. You're our low scoring couple, so feel free to confer. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. okay. Yeah. Okay, so we will go for C, C potato. C potato. C potato for C. Say Kaylee and Ted. Now, Rob and Razor, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Pretty confident that we've got 
C pineapple as D and C lemon as E, but we think they're probably too obvious. Uh, we'll go A, C nettle. C nettle. So we've got C potato and C nettle. Kaylee and Ted have gone for C potato for C. I didn't see potato in that at all. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> now you say it. Yeah. C potato. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. C potato absolutely is right for C. Oh, it's a good answer. Down it goes to 18. Very well done. <laughs> 18 for C potato. Meanwhile, Rob and Raisa have gone for C nettle for A. C nettle. Let's find out if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. If it is, it is C nettle. Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, C nettle wins it. Look at that. Oh, by one. I like that. 17 for C nettle, 18 for C potato. And that means, well done, after one question, Robin Racer, you're up 1 0. Very well done. That was close, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, the sea potato is a type of sea urchin. And the sea nettle is poisonous, it's just like, well, venomous, just yeah. like uh, real nettles. Now, I think everyone got those last two. Sea pineapple, which would have scored you 54 points. Um, beat that raw in Japanese and Korean cuisine, sea pineapple. Mm. Uh, and sea lemon, which you'll find in uh, British waters. And that would have scored you 52. And the best answer on the board is B. It is a type of fruit. It's gooseberry. Gooseberry. Sea gooseberry. gooseberry. And sea gooseberry would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said that. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your second question. This is one you have to win, Kayleigh and Ted, despite the fact Rob and Raisa get to answer it first. So good luck. Our second question is all about... Composers alive in 1920, Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you a well-known composition by various composers who were alive in 1920, but who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our compositions, and here they come. We've got Bolero, R. The Gadfly, S. West Side Story, B. Sabre Dance, K. And Madame Butterfly, P. There we are. Rob and Raisa will get to go first. Really struggling. Do not know our composers at all. Um, stop, 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 stop. I'm going to total guess. Uh, going to go the Gadfly's Stolstoy. Stolstoy yeah. for the Gadfly. OK, Stolstoy, say Rob and Racer. Now, Kaylee and Ted, can you talk us through that board? OK, I'm a little more confident with this. I'm going to let him talk, cos so, I... So, yeah, that's probably the best thing. Bolero, I'm thinking Ravi, Sabredance, Kachachurian, uh, and Sabre Dance is what I'm going to go for, Kachaturian. Kachaturian for Sabre Dance. OK, so we have Stolstoy and Kachaturian. Rob and Raisa are venturing Stolstoy for the Gadfly. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. Well, let's see if it's right first. No, not Stolstoy, which means, Kaylee and Ted, you merely have to be right with Kachaturian <laughs> for the Sabre Dance and you will win the point. Kachaturian. Absolutely right. Well yeah, well done. And that's not a bad answer. Look at that. Oh, that's a great answer. Down to four. <laughs> four for Kachaturian. And that means, well done, Kaylee and Ted, just what we needed. You're back in the game after two questions. It's one all. Well played, Ted. Now, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of the board to fill in. I there's assume quite a lot to fill in. you would like to. Madam Butterfly at the bottom. Is Puccini. Puccini would have scored you 25 West Side Story. Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein. Absolutely, he would have scored you 20. We'll go to the top now, Bolero. Ravel. Ravel, Ravel's Bolero. Torval and Dean danced to uh, Ravel's Bolero. Of course, 23. Now, do you know the Gadfly? I do, it's Shostakovich. <gasps> it is Shostakovich, so, so actually... point this answer as well. Ah, wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah, thank you. Uh, OK, now, right, it comes down to this. This is the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about... Lace places. Lace places? Yeah, I'm going to show you the names of five types of lace now. The names all come from the places where they're made. We're going to miss out alternate letters, though. Can you tell us what these lace places and types of lace are, please? Thank you very much indeed. So, here come the laces. And we've got C-A-T-L-Y, France. L-M-R-C, Ireland. H-N-T-N, UK. B-U-S-L, Belgium. And T-N-E, Denmark. There we are. Five lace places. Kaylee and Ted, you get to go first. Right, OK. So I 
think... We know two, but we I know think... two, and I think... We'll go for the we'll France? Go... Yes, we'll go for the French one, which is Chantilly. OK, Chantilly, say Kayleigh and Ted, or Chantilly. Uh, now, Rob and Razor. Do you want to talk us through those leases? Yeah, well, we've got Limerick in Ireland, which I think we probably will go for, but we've got also Brussels on the board. Do a Limerick. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll go Limerick. We're going to go for Limerick. OK, so we've got Chantilly and we've got Limerick. Um, Kayleigh and Ted went for Chantilly. Let's see if that is right for France. Chanty, absolutely right. 34. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rob and Raisa have gone for Limerick for the Irish lace. Let's see how many of our 100 said Limerick. Limerick is right. Oh, stops on 45, which means very well done indeed, Kayleigh and Ted. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Uh, very well played. Uh, Brussels wouldn't have saved you, uh, would have scored 39. Do you know the UK one? The only thing I can make fit there is Honiton. Honiton. Yeah. In Devon. Honiton yeah. is the answer. Would have scored. Sorry, I mean, I mean Honiton, but I pronounce it Honiton. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, then you got it right. Yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah, Blimey, yeah. you're on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would have scored you nine points. And the bottom one, I mean, you know this one, presumably. No. Tonda uh, in Denmark. And there's a pointless answer, I so well done for seven. Do you? Or, or <laughs> Tinder. Or Tundi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tinder. Yeah, that's the Danish Tinder. Yeah. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, Rob and Raisa, we say goodbye to you now, but you're back for one more, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, so we'll see you next time. Let's hope we can just take it one step further. Uh, but meanwhile, thank you very much indeed, Rob and Raisa. But for Kayleigh and Ted, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Kayleigh and Ted. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now get a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. Well, look at that. It's a very, very brief stealth raid. <laughs> You've just turned up, one show, straight through to the final. Um, and here we are. Uh, what do you want to see come up? What's going to help you win? I think if movies come up for you, yeah. that would be good. Or maybe, like, theatre. Theatre, movies. Music for you. Music for me, very much so. One of those, hopefully. Mm. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what's on the board. Uh, four things, as ever. And we have got... Sitcoms, 2020 Grand Slam Tennis, Small rappers, literary honours. What are we thinking? I'm thinking sitcoms. Which... Yep, I'm agreeing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the Shall we go for it? Yeah. Yes, please. Sitcoms, it is. Okay, very, very best of luck. Uh, three very different um, areas here. We're looking for any TV series for which John Sullivan has been credited with writing uh, two or more episodes. So any television series written by John Sullivan. We are looking for any actors who appeared in two or more episodes of the UK Office or we are looking for any words in the titles of any Blackadder episodes from those first four series of Blackadder. So according to IMDb, television series written by John Sullivan, actors in two or more episodes of The Office, or words in the titles of Blackadder episodes. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? I hope so, mm -hmm. yes. OK, uh, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, okay, I don't know so John office. Sullivan, Just Good Friends, Citizen Smith, Only Fools and Horses. That would be quite Green, Green Grass. Though. So those the are the four. The first two yeah. seem pretty good. Just Good Friends. Blackadder episodes, as much as I've Bell's seen them, I can't head, think of any. Goodbye. Um, private Plane. As a plane, then, maybe? General Hospital. So Plane, maybe, for that one? Private Plane. Private Plane, okay. Yeah. And words, uh, I don't think it has to be both. The actors, I think. I, I can think of some in my head, but I don't Let's know if they were in just one. Yeah, so avoid that. So what were the first two you said? Just Good Friends, Citizen Smith. OK, so and, go for those two uh, and then... Yeah, those two. Um, what was it, private plane? Private plane, yeah. OK. Yeah, I think we've got do, it. Do we want more time, or...? Um, <laughs> I don't know, shall we spitball Blackadder episode I can't titles? think of any Because I'm thinking, does Blackadder season one count? I don't know why it wouldn't. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything anyway, apart from the Black Seal, which I'm hesitant on. OK. So, Ten seconds left. Yeah, I, okay. I think do the one, the three that we've... Yeah, the three yeah. that we've got. OK, okay. With you happy? Should we stop the clock? Yeah. Why not? Why not? There we are, <laughs> clock stopped. Uh, let's have your three answers. OK, so Just Good Friends, The Green Green Grass. OK, Just Good Friends, Green Green Grass. And, and that's these, under John Sullivan. These are John Sullivan. And, and Blackadder uh, was what, Private Plane? Private Plane. Private, private Plane. 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 Yeah. Plane. OK. 
Um, of these three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? I'm going to say Just Good Friends. Just Good Friends yeah. will put last. Least likely to be pointless? Uh, plain. Plain. Yeah. And then we put Green Green Grass in the middle. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board, and here they are. We have got Plain, Green Green Grass, and Just Good Friends. Well, three good answers on the board there. Now, if one of these turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for you, what would you like to do with £2,500? Kayleigh? Uh, well, we're getting married next year, so probably go towards that. Congratulations. Um, um, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we're also moving house as well, so one of those will probably win yeah. over the other. Um, that'll, that'll <laughs> sipe it up, I think. Ted, what about you? Anything you I want to add I think I'm in agreement with Kayleigh, where, you know, whatever she says, I'll put my uh, half towards. Very good indeed. OK, well, your first answer was plain. In this case, we're looking for any word, a single word from a title of a Blackadder episode, any Blackadder episode. Let's find out if plain is correct. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. For £2,500, is it pointless? Well, it's right. We just have to hope it goes all the way down to zero, because if it does, we can send you home with that jackpot of £2,500. Down we go through the single figures. Still going down with plane, still what? done it with that. <laughs> Very well done indeed. Straight out of the traps. Congratulations, pointless plane. A brilliant answer. Straight down to zero. You are taking home today's jackpot of £2,500. Very well yeah. done. Brilliant. Uh, it's a shame not to have you back for another show, though. That's the problem. <laughs> I know. We've only just got to know you. Oh, congratulations. I know that money will be very, very well spent as well. If we had to go on, Green Green Grass would have scored you four points. Oh, yeah. Just Good Friends would have scored you two points. Wow. Uh, and literally at the last second, so Private Plane is the name of the episode. We're only looking for one word, plane, as you've seen already. It's one of the money. Private, if you'd said that instead, which you were about to, I think... Oh would have scored you one point. Oh, wow. Or, so you should listen to me more often. Yes. That, yeah, I think exactly <laughs> that. Uh, very well done, though. That's terrific work, terrific teamwork as well between the two of you. Um, now, John Sullivan, let's take a look at some of his um, writing credits. Dear John was a pointless answer. McCorber, Rock and Chips, which was the sort of uh, the early days of Only Falls. Roger, Roger, set in a taxi office. Uh, Dear John USA was a pointless answer. Heartburn Hotel, sitting pretty, and also had lots of credits on the two Ronnies. So that would have been a pointless answer as well. Well done if you said any of those. Uh, now, The Office, those of actors here. Patrick Ballady, um, who plays Neil. Ralph Einson, who's been on the show, he's um, uh, Finchie. Uh, Sally Breton, Sterling Gallagher, all the answers there are pointless apart from Ricky Gervais, uh, Martin Freeman, Stephen Merchant, Mackenzie Crick, and Lucy Davis. Everyone else is a pointless answer. Uh, and Blackadder, loads and loads of answers here. Corporal, dishonesty, incapability, potato. It, it raises its head again. Everything pointless there apart from Queen, the, and Black, goodbye, sense, general, king, of, and of course, private. Uh, so everything else from any Black Adder episode was a pointless answer. Well done if you got one at home, and congratulations. What a performance. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Kaylee and Ted, who take away today's jackpot of £2,500. Very well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>